What is going on? Thanks for tuning in for today's video. Today we're looking at the Polygon Syncline C2 full carbon cross country trail bike. This thing is packed with features found on bikes way more expensive than this one. On Bikes Online, you can pick this Polygon up for around 1600 bucks US dollars. And this thing is just loaded with features that's gonna really get you out on the trail and make you a better rider as a whole. This thing is great for that person wanting to get into cross country racing because this thing is super light. 28.4 pounds, I don't think you can beat it for the price. This thing has a good Shimano Dior 1x11 drivetrain. It's got the Shimano MT201 brakes. And this thing is just loaded with features, guys, for a low price. We're gonna show you what this thing is capable of today. We're gonna show you a little bit of what some of the features do on this bike to give you a better understanding of what you're getting into if you were to purchase this bike from Bikes Online. All right, guys, if you like these kind of videos, please stick around, subscribe to the channel. Also hit that like button if you like videos like this, and let's dive into this review. Now with this thing being a hardtail, it really climbs good. Zero pedal bog, obviously. And this thing is just great. And this one by 11 drivetrain, offers you the ability to shift down multiple gears at once. Drive train is great on stuff like this and you got these long straightaways it's just really flat and it's really nimble too this thing is super nimble because it doesn't have an overly aggressive head tube angle it just really lends itself to being able to maneuver really fast this thing is just great for this We'll say if you hit a rough patch, because we just hit a pretty good sized little rut back there, it does have a tendency to throw it off into the rut because of these 2.25 wheels. They're not that wide, which is good for an XC bike because you're not wanting all that rolling drag. You want more pedaling efficiency, which is good. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You just have to be cautious of what you're going across. But as an XC bike, you want it to be as light as possible, and that's what's happening when you have the skinnier wheel. This thing is 28 pounds. This thing is freaking super light. So if you get to like a trail end or something, you need to pop this thing around, you can do that really, really easy, really quick with this bike. It almost feels like a road bike when you hold it. It's that light. 28.4 pounds. So let's talk about the fork a little bit. So that is the only suspension on this bike since it's a hardtail. But for XC, this is optimal because you have zero pedal bog back there. It's going to be rigid. It's going to be fast. It's going to be lighter weight than having a dual suspension bike. And this bike still has all the features that you can expect on some of those bikes like this nice quick release through axle. Take that thing off super fast. You know, if you had to fix your tire or something, if you had a flat, be easily changed out on this bike. But back to the fork, this SR Suntour XCR fork, it has 120 mils of travel, which is plenty for XC. You're really only wanting to soak up some minor bumps and stuff and this fork can do it. Now this one does have a tapered head tube. So you can switch this out if you wanted to upgrade to any tapered steer fork. Be easily changed out. I know a lot of people do that with these SR Suntours, but this does have preload adjustments. It has rebound adjustments and it has a true lockout over here. If you wanted to lock out that fork, I'm trying to push down on this thing and it moves none. 
none whatsoever it doesn't have any play in it which is kind of cool you know i have other bikes that you know it'll still move like half an inch to an inch with it fully locked out fully opened I'm trying to put as much pressure as i can on it and it's still not going all the way down so you still have some dampening capabilities there if you were to hit something really hard but overall, I am pleased with this SR Suntour fork, and I'm not gonna be upgrading anytime soon with this thing. The stanchions are nice. I like the color of the stanchions too. The brace seems to be made very well. You can see how well it's reinforced back here. And yeah, no complaints with this fork future. But the Shimano MT201 brakes. You know, they're, they're kind of an entry-level hydraulic disc brake. They're not super high quality, but they are built pretty good. And they do get the job done for this XC bike. Now, you do have 180 mil disc brake up front, and then you have 160 in the back. You can definitely tell the size difference. But that is keeping the weight down. And, like I said, XC bike, you're not really needing a lot of stopping power because you're not going down a lot of hills. You're mainly... <laughs> worried about these guys going fast right here your cranks you want to you want to be putting the pedals down getting as fast as possible out there on those trails but the mt201s they are made really good the actual handles are made very solid i love the way these handles are and i love how the the whole brake housing and everything here is just made very solid and they actuate very easily very easily so looking at these wtb trail boss tires they are 2.25s very thin i know it's hard to tell in a video how thin these wheels are but uh they're pretty thin and the wheels themselves are a double wall alloy uh entity branded they they work you know i mean the wheels aren't that true. I haven't went through and actually trued the wheels up yet, but out of the box, these things do need to be trued a little bit. And it's just something with the skinnier wheel, it's more apparent. You know, on these big tire bikes where you're having a 2.8 or 2.6, it's not as obvious when you have a little bit of truing out of, out of whack. But on this wheel, it is very obvious. It does need a little bit of truing. But the tires themselves, where they're super thin, is matched very well for an XC race bike. Let's take a look at this frame. Look at that nice Polygon logo up front, tapered head tube, internal cable routing all the way through the bike. Very nicely done. This carbon frame just looks sick. And it does have purple inlays and purple accents and i know it's hard to tell from bikes on lines website if it actually has that and you can't really tell i know i didn't know it had that and it has like a purple flake to it look at that in the sun it has a purple sparkle because it has purple flake in the paint which if you're into that cool look at that it's got some carbon fiber accents to it and this is like a sticker that has been uh, polyurethaned over but this is a full carbon frame, but it wouldn't look like that if you coated over it. Really nice looking frame, really beefy. Uh, the through axles, this thing does have through axles front and rear with the quick release through axle up front. And it does have the boost spacing. So if you wanted to upgrade the hubs, the cassettes, all that in the future, very easily upgradable because of all the aftermarket stuff that goes with that boost spacing it's kind of the new modern uh, way to go moving into the drivetrain which is one of my favorite parts of this bike let's start up here at the crank it does have shimano dior crank arms with the hollowed out dior bottom bracket which is a threaded bottom bracket and it's butted up nicely to that carbon frame literally no spacing in there it's very tight tolerance which is good that's what you expect out of a bike at this price range it does have a cassette with 11 different chain rings 
and it's matched up to a Shimano hub. Okay, very nice hub. It does have the splines. It does have a splined on brake rotor back here, as well as the cassette. But the Dior rear derailleur here, the Dior derailleur is perfect for XC racing because it has this metal housing on it. Not all rear derailleurs have a metal housing. This is gonna ensure its durability and stuff over the long term. I really like that. And also it does have a lockout feature for the rear derailleur. You can see right there, I can't really push it too much. That way you're going across a lot of rocky stuff or hitting roots and things like that. You're not gonna have all that chain slap back here. But if you wanted to, you can turn that off with the flip of this switch and look at that. Your derailleur is able to move freely at that point which I think it does help. I've kind of been messing with it a little bit. It does shift a little bit better, I think, with it off. But the advantages of no chain slap and stuff are there if you want to turn that on. So very nice overall gear set. I really like the whole, the whole group as a whole. I like the 1x11 uh, with the single chain ring up front. I really like that. So overall, no complaints with the shifting or anything either. Let's get a look at the shifter up here. You can see 11 by right there. Shimano Dior. And from Bikes Online, they even say it, you know, they ship it to you with the gear set up perfect out of the box because they want you to be able to assemble this thing and get out there and start riding it and not having to worry about fine tuning your gears. Okay, the last thing before we get out and start riding this thing a little bit more and we don't have a lot of trails and we're just gonna kind of break down some of these items today. But this does have the entity branded items as far as the handlebars go. And these are 720 mils. They're not exceptionally wide, which is really good for trail use, which is really good for XC use because you can go through trees real easy. You can go through tight spaces pretty easily. Uh, it does have entity lock on grips and i really like these grips these are probably one of the the best grips i've actually ever felt on a bike which is odd for entity but these are really nice i really like them uh, i wish they would actually sell these individually uh, it does have entity expert stem on it. it does have a little bit of a distance there between the bar and the steer but i think it's good it gets the bars out just a little bit adds a little bit more stability because of the high speed maneuvering this bike can do, you're gonna have a little bit more stability as far as steering this thing when you're out there on the trails. Okay, it does have Entity Expert seat post. Moving up to the saddle, Entity branded saddle. And I actually really like this saddle. It does have a deep valley in it. Well, deep, deep enough for, you know, an entry level seat. It doesn't have super deep valley in it, but a little bit more than you get with most and the material is really nice too i really like the material I'm not sure if these are entity branded pedals but they are an alloy pedal and they do have some studs on here they're pretty aggressive these aren't the screw in type but they're not too bad overall okay guys that's all of the features that we're going to break down for this video we're going to get out and ride this thing a little bit more to give you a little bit better understanding of what you're getting into if you were to purchase this bike uh, but hopefully you like this stuff so far. This is a really nice bike for the money. Even if you're looking for a bike you can take out on some of these gravel trails and stuff, like the old railroad trails and stuff they open up that are pretty flat and you don't want to ride a road bike or a gravel bike, this right here would be a great option for that as well. All right, guys, let's hit the trails a little bit. Right, I really like the pedaling efficiency that this bike has. I don't know if you can tell how steep this is. This is a pretty steep trail. Let's go across some of this other stuff. Woo! Almost didn't make it.
thing is able to pedal really easy up this rough stuff. It's a match of the lightweight with all the other positives this bike has. All right, see how it handles. Has some speed. Brakes are working good now. Oh, what a big tree. So, fork did work pretty well, but I will say it's no air fork. So being a hydraulic suspension fork, it does okay. Uh, let's see if we can get up this really steep section here. Oh man, there we go. Here we go, digging in. All right, awesomeness of that hardtail really kicking in. Really gives you that ability to climb super easy versus like a full suspension. Wow, that narrow wheel actually cuts through that pea gravel really good. Now on my other mountain bike, it has 2.6s and it was getting all kinds of squirrely back there. So that's pretty cool about this wheel. You know, being XC, you're gonna be on conditions like this quite a bit. Where you're just out, maybe even hitting pavement occasionally. Uh, cycle through these gears. This drivetrain works very good. Okay, we hit the 11th. Let's uh, go down. And that's just doing one. That's two. All right, and then you're all the way down. Wow. So pretty quick, you can actually shift through these. So if you actually needed to go up the hill really quick, you can downshift extremely quick. So if you're looking for a beginner, starter, or even an intermediate level cross-country bike, I think this would be right up your alley. Definitely worth taking a look at, see if it might be right for you. Because for the money, you do get a lot of features for, you know, not a lot of money. 1600 bucks I know is expensive, but not for a full carbon. And Polygon says this is a cross-country race bike. so. Take it for what it's worth. All right, thanks for watching this video. I hope you like this ride review slash specs breakdown that I gave out here on the trail. And I know we didn't hit a lot of trails today. I really wanted to focus on the components of the bike and kind of how some of it performs. Not so much me just behind the bar shooting a lot of footage of me riding. I don't think, I know when I watch those videos, I can't really see how well it performs just by behind the bar footage. All right, guys, if you like this kind of content, please hit that like button. Also, stick around, subscribe to our channel, head over to my main channel page, and you check out more videos like this because I have some other Polygon Syncline C2 videos as well as how to build this bike when you receive it from bikes online because you do have to assemble this bike. All right, guys, I'll catch you in other videos.